Hello, and welcome to the Future Proof Podcast. This is our bi-monthly podcast where we chat about stuff we've been working on and anything cool we're planning. I'm Melissa. And I'm Gregory. And uh, we have been archiving some of our old streams, and uh, it's kind of made us look back on some of the, the Future Proof Plays performances we've done. Absolutely. We, we got a little bit behind uh, on some of them, but we have been playing some really cool games we stream those on twitch and then the archives end up on youtube correct uh and you know you can find our schedule for streaming uh, at futureproofgames.com slash streams link is right up there in the top nav bar uh and so you can join us we alternate uh and we do it every two weeks but Greg, you played a game that had you just completely geeking out the whole time yeah so so I played a while a little while back a game called Self Checkout Unlimited on stream um and it's a was a cool weird like so it's like mall nostalgia vapor wavy quote unquote liminal space uh themed but then also the uh what was it was a union philosophical development of the person oh. <laughs> was explored thematically through it so so it, yes. it's like this this a abandoned mall that you're exploring or or the or closed mall that you're exploring and uh but it turns out you're maybe like it's some philosophical metaphor for the development of the human being uh it's very strange it was very cool <laughs> it was fun like looking at the architectural details of malls that they put in and then also the just it's got some gorgeous like vaporwave cover inspired visuals that, that you get when you go into various like side dreamy side mission not missions side S areas side that you're exploring areas. parts of the story you're exploring yeah yeah that was cool and then your most recent game was just adorable just absolutely adorable i played uh the first frog detective game and uh the half maybe half maybe a third of the second one uh, it was an early morning stream, relatively speaking, a little mm -hmm. off schedule, so I was, I was very sleepy. But I, I, so I hadn't played those games before, which is weird. I like, you know, games of that genre. It is, what impressed me is how tightly designed they are. Like, it is a, it is designed such that they have chosen what they want to be difficult and not <laughs> what they don't want yeah, to be like difficult. Yeah, like, a lot of, like, first-person mystery puzzle adventure like inventory management games they can mm -hmm. like stump you yep frog detective is not the series for people who want to like be stuck on a puzzle right and also there's no like friction around controls there was no mm -hmm. you know th sometimes you play these games and it's you know by choice or otherwise you, it's difficult to pick things up or it's you're trying to put things on top of other things and figure out how they combine and it's a weird ui and all this sort of stuff and this was just very clean it's very clean in a way that felt deliberate and it's, it's like, they like went, classic walking simulator controls exactly exactly no no weirdness they said this is the thing we want to do and we want to make sure everything else is out of the way yeah, the weirdest thing it does is it has a magnifying glass button that <laughs> Let's you look at anything through a magnifying glass. It is not useful to solve any puzzles, but it, it does didn't. let you see things slightly enlarged. Yes, it, it did not seem it did not seem like it was going to prove useful. But there's a what you know, sort of a meta mystery happening there. There's some there's a little tidbit that carries over from game to game that is unresolved as of yet. And I won't I won't spoil it, but you know, you might see something around some corners that you can't quite catch. Uh, so I am definitely intending to finish it. The third game, I think, came out late last year. It's kind of Western-themed, mm -hmm. like country Western. It has a Razor scooter in it, I think. Excellent. If I remember right. Only 13 years too late. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, both, uh, both of these two games are archived and up on YouTube now. I'm working my way through the rest of the archives, getting them, getting them processed and scheduling them out so that they don't all just <laughs> jump in the same day. Uh, so yeah, you should come join us. We, you know, we stream two to three hours at a time and it's a lot of good fun. So depending on when this uh, 
podcast reaches you, um, it we may just be finishing up the GM's Day sale over at uh, Drive Through RPG, where they celebrate the you know the holiday of GM's Day for people who run role playing games. Um, and in that sale, our game Rosette Diceless was on sale along with its supplement. And uh, we haven't talked in detail about Rosette Diceless for a bit on the podcast, so I figured I'd just if, in case you ha- are unfamiliar with the game. Um, I can talk a little bit about it, and then if if you aren't interested, you can skip forward a little bit. Um, so it's a it's a tabletop role playing game. Um, we put it out several years ago, and it uh, it's designed to provide consensus based, story focused, improvisational role playing. And so w- that means a lot of things. Uh, one of the things that it means is that um, all of the conflict in the game, where you would normally have like Role for initiative for combat and like a Dungeons and Dragons type game, we use the same rules for every sort of conflict. So you go into kind of a turn-based mode and resolve conflicts, whether it's an argument about like trying to bargain for some expensive item to be affordable, or if you're trying to kill a big monster, or if you're trying to steer a spaceship away from the sun. All of those are sort of handled with this very much like story-based, like narrative tension-based system where you're you're able to use all sorts of skills. So it's not a it's not one of those games where you have to be like, well, I want to play this character, but I have to figure out how to make them be able to kill things. Um, <laughs> it's designed for you even to be able to bring you know your librarian character into a fist fight if necessary, and you can do like hit someone with a book or. Mm-hmm. distract someone with by pushing something over and still contribute feel like you're contributing just as much as a person who's like yeah i'm designed for this conflict specifically and um and the part of the consensus based nature of it is that we designed it so that you can shift gms really easily so you can have one person run story one week another person run story another week uh and you can even especially if you've got large numbers of players you can go without a gm at all and just depend entirely on inter-player conflict and people can kind of administer their own conflict in a small group that's not part of the larger group it's it's good for for it's very flexible for you know if you're doing a live action role-playing game or if you're doing a large table that tends to split off it'll work well for that um although our home game currently is <laughs> three players so it also works yeah. very well with, with a small number um, and you can check out if you go to tabletop.garden uh, you can check out my podcast where uh, I've run um, the great molasses flood is a mm-hmm. little mini campaign that we did with Rosette Diceless and you can see how it plays and yeah. don't worry if you miss the GM's today sale because <laughs> it's going to be on sale elsewhere it is definitely going to be on sale elsewhere. We are currently in a charity bundle on itch, and I'm going to say all of this title of this bundle, <laughs> and I'm hopefully going to get all the words out in the correct order. It is the TTRPGs for Trans Rights in Florida bundle. I do not know a smoother way to say that. Yeah, there's a lot of, there have been a lot of charity bundles over the past few years so you got to yes. distinguish them somehow exactly um, and you may have heard us mention this a little yes. while back and it just has been slow getting together due to due to some some behind the scenes factors yep so yeah it, it, we probably would have talked about it late fall and then the holidays uh-huh. hit and all sorts of logistical situations there so both rosette and its companion which i don't think we talked uh-huh. specifically about the companion but the companion we released, ah, I feel like maybe almost two years ago. It's a supplemental text based on our experience running games for a few years. It's based on questions we've been asked. It's been based on the sorts of things we found as we developed a single character over several years. Um, and so it is where we kind of say, okay, so here's some alternate rules of play. Here's some, some essays, lessons learned, etc. So both of those are in the the trans rights bundle, which is what I will just call and, it for the duration of this podcast. <laughs> and the the supplemental material also just has your standard. Here's a bunch of new options for your characters. Yes, so if you right. just want some new superlative traits, some new resources, things like that, those are in there too. Yep. So the bundle is going to run through April 7th. So uh, we are recording on the 13th. So that's, you know, 
multiple weeks. Uh, there are oh. over 500 items in the bundle. So if you are interested in anything from single player, single page, a thousand people <laughs> role playing games, whatever, there is a good chance there's good stuff in there to uh, to sift through. And all proceeds are being split between two pretty good charities, Zebra Youth and the Trans Inclusive Group. Um, and this whole thing, you know, started getting organized with uh, some of the political moves happening, particularly mm. in Florida. Not that all of us in southern region states haven't been struggling. Um, yeah, being a trans person <laughs> in Charlotte is a little rough. It's a little rough. So it's it's cool to be able to support this. Florida is in dire need of a lot of help right now with regards to this sort of stuff. Uh, the bundle is, it costs a minimum of $5. If you pay at least 10 bucks, you get a PDF of a, a 5e supplement called Monsters of Merca Chromatic Gamut. Uh, it's 100% like queer led, queer designed uh, supplement that looks weird and cool, sort of an alternate, and this is me just having read the summary, I haven't played it, but uh, it's sort of an alternate world New York City and maybe other major metropolitan areas in which queer people have a notable presence in government and the world the whole world seems queered in a way that i think looks interesting so that is automatically included in the bundle if you pay at least 10 bucks so we're excited to be in that it's been you know we don't uh we were in a lot of bundles <laughs> year after mm -hmm. year it felt like uh where like you know it's a little it can be a little overwhelming to say like oh hey here's another one yeah, this might be our last one for a while. So if you're probably if you're looking for that. one that has our stuff in it, yeah, we'll we'll see. But I would like it to be the last one because the reason we have these bundles are for mm -hmm. war and <laughs> massive bigotry and political oppression. Yep. So please, <laughs> yes, let's hope for no cause to have to raise mo money in the next year. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yep. So our tabletop role-playing games are going to be in that bundle, but if you want our video games, uh, they're shortly going to be on sale in the Steam sale. The spring Steam sale is going to be starting March 16th. I feel like this is the first one we're able to just say what the date will be. They've tried to yeah. keep it secret before, um, but they've publicly announced this one. Uh, so our games, uh, The Majesty of Colors Remastered and Ossuary are going to be on sale on steam for from the 16th through the 23rd um there's a bunch of other you know about this if you know about steam you know about the steam sale <laughs> good discounts um but if you are like i don't know about steam and i don't know about not giving us as much money as possible uh <laughs> if you love our stuff enough to to give us the maximum amount um friday march 17th hopefully will be after this episode comes out um and that is itch.io creators day which is a day where itch the the storefront itch.io which is super cool um does not take their cut so so on on these i think it's one friday a month they uh they have a day where it's like hey just have mm -hmm. all the all the money you pay will go to to creators so check out our stuff there futureproofgames.itch.io yeah, it's extremely cool. And on itch, like you can see other stuff, other of our games mm -hmm. that are not paid. Uh, like they're just oh, free yeah. games. Yeah, we've got so our, a bunch of our, free stuff. So yeah. my old flash games repackaged, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Itch is itch is a great platform. Um, and so we're we're happy to be there. So in addition to seeing all of our games on itch, you can find all of our stuff over at futureproofgames.com. We are over on co-host as FPG. We're on Twitter still as Play Future Proof. <laughs> We're on YouTube as Future Proof Games, which is where our archives are. We have stream archives from Rosette mm -hmm. Diceless Plays. Uh, so you can hit us up with questions or comments over on this post on the blog or anywhere on social media. Our theme music is Juparo by Brooke for Free, which is used with permission. Mm -hmm.